So today our backup Ender 3 is going to get some maintenance slash upgrades. You see, the lead screw nut has finally worn away. That's a lot of play. And it has done so on both sides. That's not good. So let's talk about what it is we're going to do to fix that. So when we were looking for replacement parts, I came across a few things that caught my eye. This is a Teflon coated lead screw. Now that means this thing is already going to be slick by its very nature. And the lead screw nut is made out of a material called palm, P-O-M. Now palm is a type of plastic that is considered to be self lubricating. So we have two surfaces that are already very, very slick. So it should not require us to use any sort of wet lube, like uh, super lube, for instance. This should glide very, very nicely. And one thing that a palm lead screw has an advantage of over a standard brass lead screw nut, these palm lead screw nuts appear to be made out of a negative of the threads of a lead screw. In other words, it's much, much tighter compared to a brass lead screw. There's much less play. There's much less, uh, how would you say, tolerance. Now, the only downside is uh, I bought the wrong size lead screw. I bought a 300 millimeter lead screw because I thought, hey, 300 millimeters of travel on the Z-axis, right? For prints. <laughs> Turns out the Ender 3 has like a 354 millimeter lead screw naturally and these are these are cr10 lead screws so uh it's already kind of a weird machine that being said we're just going to make sure not to print over a certain height and hope we don't accidentally screw that up because despite the fact that we have the wrong size part we're going to try it anyway just to see if it improves an issue we've been having with this particular printer now, admittedly, using anti-backlash nuts on these lead screw nuts that are made of palm might be completely unnecessary because their fitment is so tight that there really isn't any play to begin with, but I uh, figure it couldn't hurt, so I'm giving that a shot. So, due to the modification I made to the frame here to stop the printer from going upward any further, this is how I kind of level the gantry automatically using a crash leveler system uh we have barely barely got enough z height to keep everything together so we don't actually have to worry about going too high because that's just the restrictions that we're dealing with but one thing i am noticing is there's something a bit off about this frame when you go all the way down the lead screws point towards the inner portion almost like as if the center bar on the bottom has been made too long and when you put everything together it forces everything in as it goes to the top it's kind of weird or could be as simple as these brackets just weren't really made to the proper specifications this is an official creality kit for the dual Z on the back end, but uh, technically made for a CR10. It's being used on an Ender 3, but to be fair, I use it on this Ender 3 and I have no issues with it. So, I don't know, maybe just variation, but it does technically fit. The motion is indeed very smooth. So, I don't think we're going to have any problems. But here is the issue. There is perhaps one problem. Because of the way these things are bent inwards, it could wear out the palm nut uh, much, much faster than if it was properly aligned up and down. There's probably some shims I can get to move the motors left and right, forward and backwards. I'm going to have to see what's available out there because I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one to deal with something like this from Creality. It's Creality after all. So, that being said, you can actually see what I'm talking about as we get further down. 
and that's going to cause some uh, issues with the layer height because it won't be super consistent. Now we do have some compensation for this issue down at the lead screw coupler here. It's a spider coupler, but these particular coupler, couplers are rather stiff. They're not going to give and flex as good as you would probably want them to to correct for something this extreme. Now I found something on Thingiverse, which is this thing right here that I printed, that seems to be working pretty good so far. I'll put a link to that in the description because someone who makes something good ought to get credit. So look there if you're also having the same issue. And I'm going to demonstrate what it is we fixed versus uh, the side that has yet to receive that fix. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up my crash leveler for my SD card. And we're going to look at the Z-axis rod. And you'll actually be able to see it's, it's much more straight up and down now. It wiggles a tiny, tiny bit. But it is not like completely flexing in the wrong direction anymore. Which is great. So I was able to horizontally align the shaft of the motor. Now this side over here has yet to receive that printed part. So you'll see this side acting a bit strange. It'll be, it'll be doing a lot more wobbling. So that side needs to be aligned. But uh, this side doesn't do that nearly as much, and it's significantly better than before. So, we have new lead screws. We have new lead screw nuts. And they are very, very slick. So we're finally at a point where the lead screw and the lead screw nut has no wobble in it. And now that we've aligned it, we should have a much better layer per layer stack because uh, the reality is if you're trying to go 100 millimeters up but your lead screw is like this you're not going to go 100 millimeters up you're going to be a little bit under it and that's going to affect the layers as it stacks up and up but this is one of several things we're going to be doing to try and make this printer print a little better